Hello everyone, welcome again. In this software testing tutorial, we are going to learn about test reporting in software testing. Now, when you are doing a software testing in any project, test reporting is a very, very important aspect because reporting how your testing has progressed and how it is going is very important for the stakeholders of the project to make key decisions of release, uh, whether they want to release or they don't want to release, depending on how the quality looks like. So test reporting is very important aspect of software testing. And now when we talk about test reporting, let's first understand what exactly is test report. So test report is any document that you as part of the testing team. So usually it will be produced by the test lead or test manager of the project who will um, make sure that whatever key activities have been performed as part of that particular release or key activities into testing have been performed as part of that release will be documented. What were the key findings? how the testing went, how many defects were identified, the classification of defects, etc. So there is a lot of information that goes into the test report. Now, prior to agile testing uh, or prior to agile uh, development approaches, for example, uh, Scrum uh, is very widely used nowadays. When it was the waterfall approach, this test summary report or test report was prepared into the word document and it, there was a complete a set of you know a template that was followed to uh, communicate the status of testing to the stakeholders now when we talk about the agile scrum in scrum as well we follow a particular structure so say for example in a particular program increment which is basically uh, 10 to 12 weeks uh, worth of work you will generate a test summary report in that cycle or even earlier. So it depends how frequently your organization wants to release the software in production. You have to generate test reports accordingly. If the release is of longer duration, your report will be having a lot more information and will still follow a predefined structure or the key information needs to go within the report. Now, when we say agile software development doesn't mean that the documentation doesn't need to be there. So whatever relevant documentation, important documentation is required, it should still be there even if you're following Scrum or uh, agile development approaches. So in the software uh, test summary report or test, uh, test summary report, which is basically the report that you produce after the testing has finished for a particular release, what all key information needs to go into the test summary report we'll discuss that so we have understood that it's a document it could be a document a word document or it could be a document produced out of confluence you can define a template there and in, include the key information there and in the confluence uh, confluence is a document tool or a wiki from atlassian uh, you can get the dynamic information from your test management tool. For example, Jira, you can get the information directly into Confluence. And all those details we'll discuss in the test summary report. Now, the first and foremost important thing about test summary report is uh, what exactly is your objective? So say, for example, you are testing in uh, you are testing a certain application what was the objective so when you are documenting the test summary report the first thing you will say is test objective so that's the first section so these are some of the so whatever sections i'm discussing here these will be the key sections that you will include in your test summary report it doesn't matter you're following the waterfall approach or agile approach if you're following agile approach you have to produce test summary report very frequently you might reduce some of the information within these uh, within these sections but sections still need to be there because they give the clarity to the stakeholders when they read it to decide whether the software is of better quality or there are issues within the quality so you have the test objective section wherein you define what was the objective of testing the second key section in the test summary report is the application overview right so this 
uh, application overview so if it is you know the complete application that you are uh, deploying then you provide the overview of that if you are testing only parts of the application you provide the overview of the functionalities or the key features that you are testing as part of the um, testing the third important point there is the testing scope so what exactly did you test in the overall testing cycle or even if you are doing the testing in agile approach when you did the testing within sprints what all did you test so what was the scope of testing what was the in scope features right or stories that you tested uh, and as part of those stories what was out of scope okay so all this information goes into the testing scope then other important section is the test approach right so what approach did you follow to go through and test the application so in the test approach what you will mostly uh, mention is what were the test levels that you did how you approach the testing so all the details around the test approach will go into the test approach section and now this document doesn't need to be uh, having lots and lots of information which is irrelevant it just needs to have the relevant piece of information within it the next important section is the test environment details so test environment details now in the test environment details what you need to put it is where did you test what were the platforms what was the combination of uh, the platforms and if there are any software browser combination so all those details need to go there in the test environment details so that stakeholders can go through the uh, this report and understand how the testing has been done and what platforms have been covered overall the next comes the testing metrics so this is very important so testing metrics uh, when we say testing metrics how the testing progressed and what was the overall performance or overall uh, result as part of the testing right so in the testing metrics the first and foremost thing is say for example you have executed 100 test cases so you will mention uh, tests planned versus uh, tests executed right and then the next important inf information is test pass fail so how many test fall uh, how many test cases passed how many test cases failed um, the next important section will be around the defect right now defect summary now testing metrics might have many more metrics within these this testing metric section so this this is not the full list of testing metrics so depending on what your stakeholders are looking for you provide all the testing metrics within the testing metrics section in the defect summary you provide the defect metrics or defect summary so how many defects got raised what were the critical defects and depending on what all information is being looked by the stakeholders for the defect summary you provide all those details in the defect summary and provide the defect details within the defect summary so for example if there are any outstanding defects so here you can say uh, total defects so you can provide uh, a table of total defects the statuses of the defect right and then if there are any outstanding defects outstanding defects that need to be accepted by the stakeholders so that they can so that uh, they can sign off this particular report so that also needs to be uh, provided into the defect summary so there might be some outstanding defects which have been internally within the team have been discussed that they are low priority and can be accepted now in the test summary report you need to mention those defects as well as outstanding defects and they have been accepted so that every stakeholder of uh, the project is aware of those defects as well and then the last section or the last important section is about the overall summary right so overall summary 
of the project so let me write this here so over all summary so in the overall summary section you will summarize the overall testing and what you as a team or as a test lead feel the overall aspects of testing and the overall quality about the release that you are that you have just tested for right so these are some of the key sections that you need to include in the test, test summary report and why test summary report is very important in software testing so test summary report is important so that when you send this test summary report to the stakeholders they can see what all testing has been done what uh, test approach was there what were the environment details the metrics the defects any outstanding defects and so they can approve or they uh, if, if they want to approve the release and move to the production they can based on this particular document test summary report they can approve and move the release to the production or if they are not comfortable that there are a couple of issues that they need to fix then they can decide whether they do not want to release that particular build to the production so that's why test summary report is very important testing as you go through and do the testing you also need to provide the summary of the testing to the stakeholders to the project members uh, so that everyone is aware how the testing is progressing test summary report is equally applicable for the traditional development approaches like waterfall v model as well as for the agile development approach in agile if you're following scrum still you have to produce test summary report it might be crisp it might be short uh, depending on the duration of the release that you are pro producing the test summary report for usually in agile there i have seen in couple of organizations the release happen every month so if you are releasing every month you will be testing you will be having very little amount of stories couple of stories to test within a month so for those stories you provide the test summary report and it will be a short report as compared to a report for a release which happens every three months or six months okay so this is a brief introduction about test summary report why it is important and how it is applicable to waterfall projects and agile projects in software testing so that's all for this tutorial hope it was helpful thank you very much for watching